We have a Bloomberg Best economist with us, Nairman Baravesh. He's the chief economist from IHS. And Nairman, uh, always good to see you. And let me just take actually first your, your reaction to what we heard from Bernanke. The Fed now, uh, they're saying they're vigilant about watching out for what is going on with the foreclosure crisis. What does that tell you? Well, here's the problem. You know, the Fed can do all the QE it wants to, all the quantitative easing it wants to. It can push mortgage rates down more, which it probably will. Mm -hmm. But if we don't fix the foreclosure problem, housing's still going to be stuck on the bottom, basically. So they've got to deal with this. They've got to take it very seriously. They've got to figure out what the problem is and what the fixes are. So between the Fed and the administration, whoever else, this is a, this is a high priority problem going ahead. Uh, it is because high if we don't, as I said, I'm sorry. Well, Nairman, it is a high priority problem. So what exactly do you think the Fed can bring to the table to try to clear this up that Bank of America and others are not already doing? Well, I think we need to set some regulatory guidelines, if you will, in place uh, to make sure that the process is, is, is resolved fairly quickly, it's resolved equitably. I mean, all of this stuff, I mean, what we're finding out is that the paperwork was never done, mm -hmm. it was rushed through, it has, a lot of stuff has to be revisited. People who thought they had a home didn't have a home. This is crazy. I mean, it's, it's just, it's not working, obviously. No, no, it, it's not working, and it seems like every day you're hearing about more and more problems. Okay, um, so putting aside this foreclosure problem, uh, let me ask you about, you know, because we're just coming upon or just coming after this meeting of the G. 20 finance ministers and a lot of people talking about, you know, competitive devaluation. Uh, one country that is not seeing their currency competitive de competitively devalued is Japan. I mean, in fact, they're seeing the yen hitting this 15-year high. Um, they got export data out last night that basically showed that exports are slowing. No surprise. Where does that leave Japan? Well, I, there's no question Japan's economy is slowing very dramatically. Our best guess is that this quarter, sorry, the third quarter, the quarter we just were done with, right. was flat after about one and a half percent in the second quarter, five percent in the first quarter. So as, as you're saying, the, the export data was down month over month by just a little bit. Uh, but everything's slowing. And very interestingly, their exports to China slowed quite a bit from about 18 uh, percent in, 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 uh, in August to about 10 percent in, in September, which suggests that China's slowing is also affecting uh, Japan as well. So they're in trouble because China, uh, Japan's in trouble because exports are a big engine of growth for them. Right. So not only are they seeing the prices of their own products go up, but they're actually seeing demand slow down uh, in the key countries, like you say, uh, just like China. So, uh, but again, let me get back to that question, though. Where does that leave Japan? I mean, you hear about manufacturers, for instance, they're moving overseas now, their operations, because it's just too expensive uh, in their own country. Um, you know, where does that leave them, though, two to three years out with their debt? Well, yeah, Japan's in very deep trouble. It's got what I call the four Ds. Too much dependence on exports. We were just talking about that. Deflation, serious deflation and persistent deflation. Debt, as you were saying, highest in the rich world. And demographics. They've got the uh, fastest aging population. So Japan's prospects going forward, I mean, trend growth in Japan, they're lucky to get 1%. Uh, so they're in serious trouble because of major structural problems. Okay, so does that mean default? Another D, default? Well, it's possible, it's entirely possible. The only saving grace for Japan is most of their debt is held internally. Um, so from that perspective, they might be able to work something out without going through a Greece-like scenario, if you will. Okay. All right, Nairman, we'll leave it there. But nice to see you, as always, Nairman Baravish of IHS, talking about two topics, the Fed and Japan.